I remember the very first time I saw Bill Cooper painting, it was in 1979. I had just published a book called Life on Earth and I was visiting the Australian publishers and coming out of the office, feeling rather wealthy because I'd signed a contract, I saw the most beautiful pictures of Birds of Paradise on the corridor. I said, who on earth painted those? And they said, his name William Cooper. And that these were illustrations from a new book he was just doing on Birds of Paradise. And I said, oh, I would love to meet him because uh, they seem to me the most beautiful paintings of birds I've ever seen. And they said, well, he's a very touchy character, you know, he lives away in the forest and we can't put you directly in contact. And uh, so I thought, well, that was that. Um, but I then, uh, I got a copy of that book, of course, uh, but I then actually managed to get a contact and directly wrote to Bill. And uh, he said, come and see me. So that was just great. Well, the paintings, of course, are meticulous. And they're beautifully finished. They're so neat and yet so accurate and truthful. And those are characters that Bill had. He was, he was, he was a truthful man. Uh, he was a, a marvelously caring man. He cared about the detail of life. And he was also extremely personally neat. Then you don't find blots and dots and carelessness on these paintings. And you didn't find that in his life either. Uh, he lived in a wonderful place in the middle of the rainforest up in northern Queensland. And his house, which was meticulously cape, his studio, uh, was also beautifully tidy and, and, uh, and neat. Um, and, and those are characters, really, which you see in Bill and you see in the paintings, too. Uh, so the one and two are the same thing. The history of, um, of, of bird illustration, ornithological illustration, is, uh, is a long one. I mean, it goes back several hundred years. Uh, and it's a very, very specialised skill. Uh, because, of course, it has to be absolutely accurate scientifically. Uh, and the rules that you have to abide by in order to make an, an ornithological illustration, a scientific one, are very precise. I mean, you have to show the male and the female. And you have to show them in a way in which an ornithologist or a man in the field could actually look at the bird and see those characteristics which define that bird as that particular species. You have to see all those uh, in, the, uh, in the picture. I once said to Bill rather foolishly, uh, does it matter how many details, how many, how many feathers there are, for example, in the wing? He was absolutely horrified, the thought that they might not be accurate. Of course it is, that's absolutely accurate. So scientific accuracy is absolutely essential in ornithological illustration. And that can tend to make the bird look um, without life. Uh, and of course, many bird, many bird illustrators, certainly in the past, uh, were never able to see the birds in the wild because in the past, of course, you didn't have binoculars or anything. I'm talking about the 19th century. So most of the, 19th, the great 19th century ornithological illustrators, for example, worked with stuffed skins with, with the, from museums in which you could count how many feathers there were and you could see the postures. Now, Bill actually did that. And, and so when you went to his studio, there would be perhaps one or two of these bird skins sitting on his desk there with museum tags on it. Um, and they were very important. So he'd consult that. The absolute measurements and proportions are absolutely right. But he always, as far as you could possibly, see that bird in the field if he possibly could. And that's what's so stunning about his pictures, is that the birds have this extraordinary uh, accuracy and but vivacity, life. Um, I, one, of the, one of the disadvantages, of course, of, of doing such illustrations um, is that uh, the birds have to be in particular postures. For example, now birds of paradise have the most extraordinary displays. And yet the illustrations that Bill produced of them show none of that. And I said, why don't you do that, Bill? And he said, because the rules are such that you have to have the bird in certain positions in which you can see all these characteristics. So I persuaded Bill, I said, look, Bill, would you paint me one where the bird of paradise is actually displaying? Uh, and so he agreed. It was against his better judgment, I think, as far as, uh, uh, as an ornithological illustrator. But that's one of them. And he said, yes, I'll, I'll, produce, I'll produce one of, of Count Raj's bird of paradise, red bird of paradise. 
and there's a posture in the uh, courtship display with the male adopts that has not been properly described, as far as I'm aware, says Bill. That's it. It's when the female has stayed on the branch and the male decides, goes, flies below her, lies, and then creeps up towards her with his head down and his plumes half displayed. That's very characteristic. And that was one which Bill produced for me. And I am thrilled to have it. I think Bill's paintings, it, it, there, there are many, many splendid bird illustrators. And, and it's very difficult and perhaps silly to try and choose one above all others. But uh, we all have our own personal taste. And for me, uh, Bill's paintings uh, have an extraordinary uh, vivacity a life which is lacking in others. They also have, he pays the greatest attention to the backgrounds. The, bird, the plants in which the bird is sitting are all those in which the bird would be sitting in nature. If they have a fruit, he will show the bird picking that particular fruit of that particular species. Uh, and the, the, the leaves, one of the characteristic people, he was delighted in, in making, a, there would be a leaf somewhere in the picture have been half nibbled by an insect of some kind. He believed in bringing in the accuracy. He actually started life as a landscape painter and he was very skilled at producing a background on which he's going to place the birds in uh, a very stylized way of, of the landscape in which it's half seen, half remembered, almost out of the corner of your eyes, you see, so it doesn't take the attention from the bird but it's nonetheless accurate. And then you see it in that, for example. Birds of Paradise are, 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 are a passion of mine and they were a passion of Bill's and he produced, as far as I'm concerned, by far the greatest uh, set of illustrations of Birds of Paradise species. So when I asked him to produce something, it had to be really a Bird of Paradise and I kept asking him, as a matter of fact, and I wanted Birds of Paradise in display and I asked him, uh, and that was one of the first he did, he also produced a marvellous uh, picture of, of uh, a bluebird of paradise in display, which is a remarkable display in itself. The bird display is hanging upside down, one fanning, fanning out his plumes and throbbing, and you get all that from, the bird, from his picture. And also, uh, superb bird of paradise, which he painted. In fact, he painted a whole news, a uh, whole sequence of the different species in display in the end. Uh, even though uh, he wasn't absolutely sure in some instances exactly how the bird was. And he, when I asked him to produce a sickle bill, for example, showing it in display, he said, oh, I'm not absolutely sure I've got the right observations to know to do it. He did me one, uh, which I love, uh, but he, and he now, he then said, oh, I want that back because I don't think it's quite accurate. I think there's a detail of how he finished the display that's not there. But happily, I never gave it him back and I still have it. I have a number of Bill's paintings uh, and it's very difficult to decide on one. Uh, you never tire of them, but at the same time, there'll be one that you haven't seen for a bit. So I take that one down and put another one up and there's one in the living room where I normally live, and there's this one in the library.